Hello folks, I recently did a video segment for uh, displaying the uh, normal forces or member forces uh, in a trust structure within the CATIA V5 programs FEA solver. Uh, this, the steps there are kind of uh, awkward and uh, uh, lengthy and non-trivial by the way. And the reason being that uh, of course, the FEA solver buried inside of the v 5 is uh, something called Elfini or the stripped, version, stripped down version of the Elfini program, which is 30 years old. And uh, it was not really intended for things of this type. Uh, what I want to do is uh, going through the same exercise in the 3D experiences platform where the FEA solver is actually the Abacus program. So. It's a lot more straightforward to display the uh, the uh, internal forces uh, in that case. Now uh, I'm going to do that in the same in the context of this example, which is exactly what I did for the Katia Katia example. Uh, this is a, a statically determined structure, so the member forces actually do not depend on material properties and the cross-sectional area. Uh, however. Uh, if we're going to do the FEA in, uh, in, in these packages, you have to specify the properties. And therefore, I'm going to assume it's made of steel. And uh, it's, uh, the area cross-section is given that as 0 0.001 meter squared. Hand calculation shows you these, uh, these internal forces. So we should be getting things which are in agreement with the values that you see here. Now, I have a slide here. Uh, that I will walk you through it when we do the problem. Our first task is to make this model. So let's go ahead to... Uh... <clears throat> okay, let's go ahead to the 3D platform right there. Uh, 3D experience platform. Let's start with the part file. So I'm going to start with the part file. <clears throat> there we are. The units have already been changed so that it... Uh, Counts for the things that I want, and remember that is not in the in the, the way the way to do it. You go on the top right corner on the preferences and uh, under this tab, which is common preferences, and you can change the units. The units have already been changed, so I'm not going to bother doing that. Okay, so let me go create uh, four points, and the four points basically represent these uh, points A, B, C, and D. And uh, let's see now, I'm in part design, so we go to essential, here's the point, double click. Uh, first one is at the origin. The next one is four meters to the right. The next one is eight meters to the right. And the last one is uh, four meters to the right and three meters up. Okay, so let me cancel that. We're going to put it in the view mode, fit everything, and there they are, point one, two, three, and four. Now we're going to draw lines. They go from here to here. Another one from here to here. And remember, I'm doing a truss problem, therefore I'll make sure that there's only one element between these joints. There's no reason to do more than one element, at least in a problem like this, where the loads are applied at the at the joints. So from here to here, there we are, and then cancel. <clears throat> okay, let's apply some dummy material property on it. Uh, steel, for example, so we go to tools, uh, let's say create a material. <clears throat> I'll call it uh, uh, steel. So February 13, February 12, 2024. Nothing special about this material. So, uh, uh, right there, so we're gonna apply. I'm gonna close that, apply to that. Okay, let's go input the properties, so. Uh, Double click on material. Uh, we don't need the density, so let's go to structural. Uh, abacus multi physics, mechanical, elasticity, elastic, and for steel, uh, unit of Pascal 210 
GPA, GPA, and the Poisson ratio 0.3, for example. That takes care of it. All right, now we're gonna do the meshing. So we go to uh, 3D on the top, top left corner to the uh, compass. So uh, we can go to structure uh, structure model creation, or keep in mind, you can also do it like this, right click, insert, uh, insert a, uh, what is that? Insert the finite element model, or right here, we can do it like that. But you know, I'm gonna go the usual way. So uh, structure model creation, MTFEM, <clears throat> now, uh, uh, for meshing, uh, this is what I need. Later on, I'm going to change this thing to be a truss element or a link element, but right now, I'll call it... Oh, one thing I forgot to do is notice that I can go and mesh these things the way the, the way they are, these four four lines, except that because these are separate lines at these junction point, they have different node numbers. Now, of course, it can be fixed, but the alternative it can be fixed, but the alternative is go back and join these four or five for a curve for five lines so that when we mesh it, we don't run into that problem. And that's very easy. You just double click on the 3D shape, okay, and change workbenches. You go to, for example, uh, generative shape design. Oh. And now we're going to get the join. Here's the join and join all these five lines. Uh, this will ensure that at the juncture, they have identical node. Now, if this thing pops up, it's because these two boxes are checked. So I'll make sure they're unchecked and then say, okay. There we are, it's joined. Now we go back to FEA, to the meshing, click on the, uh, click on the beam mesh. You select the entire joint, it's going to be done in one shot, and you make sure that the side of the elements is five meters. That guarantees that there's going to be a single element on each of these lines. So, uh, and then we're going to use two noted elements. So we say, fine, that's already meshed. <clears throat> now for uh, cross-sectional property, you go to pro properties. Notice that here is the stuff for one uh, for beam section, but we don't want beam section, we want link section, see that? You don't want beam section, you want link section, you click on the link section, and uh, uh, we can select the join because we did it, we can do it one by one if they have different different cross-sectional areas, but uh, I'm going to use join, it's going to be done in one shot, and the value area is 0 0.001 uh, meter squared, we already did that. Okay, good. Now, uh, this is pretty much done here. So we're going to go to uh, structure scenario creation. This is where we apply loads and boundary conditions and things like that. So we select our uh, finite level model. Now uh, notice that uh, we have to specify the procedure. The procedure is static analysis. And I'm going to uncheck the nonlinearities because this is just to show you how to display the member forces. You don't want to do anything substantial. And uh, I'll, I'll leave these things the way they are because it's going to do it in one, one increment. So that, that's right. Uh, good. Now, uh, the boundary conditions. So we go to uh, boundary conditions. Uh, this is a fixed, a fixed displacement. So why don't I uh, select that whole join? That's easier. And we're going to make this thing move only in the Y and Z uh, direction, nothing in the X direction. So that essentially becomes a two dimensional problem. So I, I, I uh, check displacement in X is fixed. I don't have to worry about rotation because these are link elements. They don't have rotational degrees of freedom. But now this, this end, this end, this vertex, not the point, make sure you hide the point. You don't want to put your load on the point. The same thing, by the way, in this side. <coughs> you hide this, uh, this point so that you don't inadvertently put your... Uh, the strain on the, the point, which is not going to be working. So click on the uh, fixed displacement, that vertex. Uh, it's already not moving in X, but if you insist, you can also check it again. 
was already we know that it's not moving in 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 box anyways because we restricted the entire model to move in the x direction and then the other side <coughs> This is on a roller. Once again, it's not necessary to say X, but if you want to, you can do that. And no displacement in the direction Z. That becomes a roller. Okay. Now, as far as the load goes, <coughs> here is the force uh, on this point. Again, don't put it on point. Hide it. Make sure you hide the point. You put it on the vertex. Uh, in the direction Z, it's uh, 20,000 Newton. And in the direction, I'm going to do that separately in the same point, same node, or not node, node or vertex in the direction Y, 15,000. Okay, good. Now, we're going to run it, and it will work fine, except that you will see that you won't have access to your internal forces. So let's go ahead and run it. First, we do a model and scenario check. No problem. Then we do a simulation check. I don't anticipate any problem either. Just bear with me for a second. Okay, this is uh, pretty much done, good. And then now we're gonna simulate, and it will find, it, it will deform, except that uh, it will develop stresses in the member, member form, but you cannot display it, okay? <coughs> and uh, we have to go back to the uh, scenario creation and ask for that particular component that we want to actually plot, okay? All right, so we say uh, close this. Uh, for example, if you want, uh, uh, if you want uh, stresses, uh, or if you want displacement, okay? But the only thing is that we don't have access to uh, that variable that gives you the internal forces. So what we have to do, we go back to scenario. We click on this guy output request and under forces ask for enforce see that uh, this is the one that deals with the uh, internal forces so we say okay now we're going to go run it <laughs> I didn't bother doing the model check and, uh, and simulation check because I didn't do anything weird. So, uh, and it is done. Okay, close that. Now, here, if you look, I'm looking for that enforce. The way to do that, you double click. You see that you double click on the contour, and you go and select under uh, under this pull down menu enforce right there, enforce. Okay, and you want the magnitude. Or you can have a uh, you know you can have the component, uh, but the magnitude is going to give you all the wrong, give you positive values. Uh, let's 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 try this thing first. <laughs> Apply, and there we are. And if I close this, and I put the and I put the cursor on this member, it says seven thousand two hundred ninety. Okay, and if you go here, is uh, one of the most seven hundred two hundred ninety. Uh, the other one, let's go put the cursor there. If you put it there, it says five thousand eight hundred and thirty, and there is uh, 5,830, okay? Uh, but it doesn't show you with an intentional compression. So let's go ahead and, and this, by the way, FBD is going to be zero. If you put the cursor on this vertical one, it should give you a very small number or zero. 
Okay, to get the correct sign on whether the member is intentional compression, uh, what we can do is we can double click on this, whatever I've got on the screen, and go to stress, stress component. Make sure that you don't use nodes, but you use elements, and then use the pull down menu here to go to the uh, tensor component one one. That's because it's a bar element. The only stress component that's present in it is the axial component. Okay, and what I'm sh what I did here is basically this uh, setup. So you uh, uh, you went to the stress. Uh, make sure you're plotting at element level and use the pull down menu down here to select uh, tensor component one one. All right, so let's go back here and then we say okay. Now notice that what happens if you put the cursor here, you get the correct value. This is intention, this is intention, this is zero, and these are both compression. This guy is compression, there's a negative sign, and there's a negative sign there. And that takes care of the correct sign. Good luck.